What's up guys, let's take a look at another Code Wars exercise. This one's called parse a linked list from a string. We're gonna make a linked list of nodes that look like this, each one having a piece of data and a pointer to the next, which has a piece of data and a pointer to the next, all the way until the end when we hit a none. But of course, the thing about a linked list is you can always add more by just changing that pointer to something else instead and continuing the chain. Now, this doesn't really have any beautiful examples, so I'm going to jump to the test cases, and we're going to see they give us a string with something, arrow, something, arrow, something, and then a none. And I think we're supposed to convert them to integers, if I remember right. We'll see how that goes. So, basically, the problem is, if I'm looking forward, and I say I've got a node, it points to, well, I haven't made that next node yet. So what people often do for stuff like this is they go backwards. You do the last one, and then when you do the second to last, we have something to point to because we just made it. And when we do the third to last, we have something to point to because we just made it. And I could do that, but I feel like trying something else, which is going to end up with the same result anyway. Let me show you what I'd like to try, and then when we look at the solutions from other people, you'll mostly see that backwards approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, let's look at the left. Let's break off the thing before the first arrow. So I'm going to go s dot partition um, arrow with some spaces. Partition is like split, except it always gives you exactly three things, before, during, and after. And that's all I care about. I don't really need to split all the other numbers that'll be later, I'm going to save them. So I'm going to say if it's uh, none and then some stuff, I think there'll be empty strings, but it doesn't matter. Um, then we return, oops, we return none. And then if it's not none, which means we're not at the end, we've got something. I think it's always a number. And maybe nuns in the future, or maybe other stuff. Okay, So I'm going to call that head and tail, or head and body, or something like that, meaning the first thing and the rest. That underscore is the arrow, which is not going to appear in our nodes. It was just the string you know, delimiter to go between them. So then we return a node is very similar to none and easy to typo of well what's a node it's two things right data and next so the data I think it's int of head we'll try that and see what happens and then what does it point to it points to whatever comes next so we just do the recursion with the tail, meaning the rest of the stuff. So for example, we chop off this one, we ignore the arrow, and then we put the rest of this through the function again. And then we chop off this two, and we forget the arrow, and we put the rest of this through the function again. And so we keep doing that. And what happens is you're stacking up these calls, and it resolves backwards you know, it does the last one as a none, and then it goes back down the chain. But that means I'm not writing it backwards, I'm writing it forwards, which is more natural to me. We'll see if it works, and then we'll see how it compares to the other people's solutions. It's pretty much the same amount of lines and everything, but I just think this is kind of cute. So let's test it out, make sure I haven't completely ruined it. No, that seems fine. And then if I had attempt to do the big test, yeah, we're all right. So let me see on the other solutions and how they compare. So right here, oh, that's me. Let's go to all. And then here's someone who did the backwards approach. You start, um, scoot back a little bit, and then you have that negative one on the end, which means we're going backwards. And you're looking to say, hey, what am I making a note of? I'm making a note of the previous one that I just did, 
which is head, because after the first time it won't be none anymore, it'll be the node of something. And then we finally return it, because whenever you return a linked list, you just need the head. Everything else is contained in there. It'll tell you where to go for the next one, which will tell you where to go for the next one, and so on. Um, here's a cool one. This person used reduce, which is a way to take you know, two things, put them through a function, and then take the next thing and compare them and sort of uh, reduce means you're reducing the dimensions. You're going from, you know, a box to a line or a line to a point, and that's kind of what we're doing here. So that's kind of cool. However, they have the issue of going backwards, and so they had to import this I slice thing to see if they can reverse the path just like this person did with the slice. So that's kind of cool. I like this one. This one's closer to mine, um, but I think it's a little harder to read being one big line. Um, so mine has a little bit more um, separation, but maybe you think it's silly to do five or six lines when it could be one. In general, though, I like this one because I've been using match case, I've been using recursion, not just for Python, but if you're looking at other languages, especially new cool languages like Gleam, then you might want to practice that stuff. Give it a shot.